Hey, dudes and dudes, Mr. Theris here, and welcome to the third part in an ongoing uh, review series I'm doing, where I'll be reviewing the Child's Place Saga 1 through 7, uh, as part of my Halloween month. Uh, if you have uh, new to this little series, I uh, recommend going back to 1 and 2. Um, unless you know the Child's Play off by heart, and you just want to jump in and listen to a review of your favourite one, and 3 is your favourite. Um, so cool, welcome. If you are one that's already watched this series and you're back for part three, then welcome back. Um, if you've already been here, you know how this goes. Is kind of way one of my reviews work is I kind of talk loosely about the plot and then I'll talk about how I kind of felt about the episode and call like things that uh, I may have noticed. Um, and at the end, I'll add a little segment that will either be uh, Easter eggs or like, huh, that was kind of um, interesting, or a new segment added in in well, the second part, which was kind of like, we talked about how I feel the rules of this universe work, um, uh, you already broke down a bunch of the rules of the universe in part two, so I'm going to kind of go back and uh, watch that, but anyway, let's get on with it with Child's Play 3. Okay, so Child's Play 3, what's the plot of this one? Um, well, if you uh, know the plot so far of the Child's Play universe, it is about um, a doll, this one, um, who is currently possessed with the soul of uh, Charles Lee Ray, and in part one, um, he revealed himself to Andy, and uh, the rule of this universe is that if, um, if he reveals who that he is actually a person uh, to anyone, the first person he reveals it to, he is able to body swap with that person uh, so he can become human again. Uh, in part one, he tried to take uh, Andy's body, who was six at the time, and unfortunately, Shuggy didn't manage it. Very fortunate for Andy though. Um, in part two, he tried the same thing, but Andy was a little bit older, but instead of living with his own mum, uh, because of the events of the first one, his mum has been institutionalised, and he is now living with foster parents, and he attempts to save thing again, killing anyone that gets in his way, uh, which is important. Um, and Chucky uh, gets defeated again by Andy and Andy's now foster sister. Um, and he managed to kill Chucky for a second time by uh, melting him in a good guy doll factory, which is the name of the uh, toy that Chucky is possessing. Uh, and then filling his head with gas and he explodes and we think that's the end of Chucky. Unfortunately, we begin in Charles Place 3 and the movie opens up with an abandoned factory, it's clearly the Good Guy Dog Factory. Uh, it's all dusty, it's been some years. Um, and it, the whole factory is being restarted up. Uh, they're dusting away at all the cobwebs and stuff, the factory lines all being started up again. And uh, the big mass of stuff that was Chucky, that we saw at the end of the second one, is uh, lifted up off the ground. Um, but because Chucky has been in this form for so long, he is now, uh, it's become almost human. It's still a doll, but it bleeds and he can be killed as the doll. Uh, as they lift it up, it starts to bleed and they carry it over the top of a vat. Um, that's clearly the plastic used for good guy dolls. And Chucky's blood drips into it and it starts to go all funky. Uh, we, re we find out that uh, this has created a new body for Chucky. And the reason the factory is reopening is because it's been six or eight, I can't remember exactly how many, years. And the Good Guy Doll company has decided that this is the toy that's made them the most money. The, uh, publicity, the negative publicity from uh, Andy um, has been some time. Hopefully people have forgotten, but they need to start selling this doll because it's their biggest seller. Um, and to prove that uh, their factory is up and running again, there is a new, improved, good guy doll, fresh off the factory line. If you guessed it, it's Chucky. Uh, he's given to the businessman who owns the company. Uh, everyone else goes home, the businessman stays in his, home, in his uh, room, playing uh, in his office, playing golf. A very 90s truck, uh, the businessman playing golf in their office. It literally is, like you watch most 90s movies with the businessman in their office and they're playing golf. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Chucky uh, then 
decides to kill this businessman and use his PC to find out where Andy is. Because he, he still wants to be human. Uh, so he kills the businessman and goes on the computer, finds where Andy is, and uh, it turns out Andy is now enrolling in a military school. Uh, we then cut to Andy the next day at the military school, and he is basically being told by the commander that uh, you're a bit of a troublemaker, uh, we're going to soon get that out of you. And this movie follows Andy, who is now 15, and then she's about 7. Yeah, it's about 8 years. Yeah, I think it's about that. It's about 14, 15, it's about 8 years later. Um, the movie does say that. And this movie then will follow Andy as he tries to uh, basically do military school, uh, which he's not doing very well at. He's being uh, picked up for being the new kid, uh, which on top of that, he then sees one day that uh, somebody has got a good guy doll at the school. Um, it turns out that um, Chucky had delivered himself and uh, posted himself directly to Andy, but the little kid who really is into the whole good guy dolls decided to keep it for himself. Um, Chucky, thinking he'd be delivered straight, Andy goes to attack the kid, goes, Oh, you're not Andy. He said, No, I'm Justin. Just remember these names. But um, yeah, and he's like, Oh, uh, well, I reveal myself to a new kid. Guess I'm taking this kid's body, and he proceeds to play a game with a kid called Hide the Soul in an armory. Uh, but they are interrupted before Charles Lee Ray can um, continue the spell, and the com uh, commanders go in there to check the armory, uh, see that there is this kid with the doll, and he's like, Dolls are for girls. Because we are knighters, and men should be men. Uh, and takes a good doll away. Um, the kid is upset. Uh, then as he walks out of the armory and across the courtyard, that's when Andy sees Chucky and he begins to freak out. Uh, because he's not concentrating, his superior officers basically make him um, punish him for it. Uh, but that night, uh, Chucky decides that, uh, he's, uh, that he wants to kill Andy so that he can uh, get him out of the way and then take over this kid's body. Uh, he that, so he attempts to kill Andy, Andy manages to beat him. Uh, the commanding officer then see uh, Andy with the doll and decide to throw uh, Chucky into a dumpster. Um, and at this point, Chucky uh, makes noises, and the binnerman's like, uh, what's that? And he's like, no, wait, there's a kid in here. And he goes to search for the bin. Uh, Chucky uh, ducks out of the bin and decides to close the uh, bin on the man and kills him. Now this is the first time we've seen in the series where Chucky has literally killed for no reason. Uh, in the first film it's always he was killing either for revenge, he was either his partner who left him there when he was dying and yes that's when he voodooed all himself into uh, the Chucky doll, into the Cook Guy doll, or the detective he attempted to kill and that was all for revenge or anyone that was deliberately in his way uh, to get into Andy. He was killing. Uh, you could pro possibly say the babysitter, but at the same time, uh, he, he does have a bit of a you hurt me, therefore I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt you kind of thing. A bit, a bit kind of like pee off the good guy doll, uh, Chucky. That's why Chucky killed her. The big man had done absolutely nothing. It's the first time that we see him generally take a thrill in killing someone for no other reason than Chucky can. And this is the way that the series continues on. For Onwards, and um, I'll talk about why that in the review. He manages to get out, everyone then sees the binman has been killed, and they're all like, Oh my god! Uh, Chucky then attempts to switch bodies again with the kid. Um, the kid decides to hide and seat with him first, though. Uh, they get into like a museum area, I think it's the commander's office, I think, something like that. And uh, that night, the commander goes to throw Chucky into a bin again, uh, but Chucky surprises him and the commander has a heart attack and Chucky's like, are you kidding me? Because he's like, I wanted to kill him and he's just had a heart attack. Uh. So, at this point, uh, the army base decide to take up an old tradition in honour of the commander that just died and play uh, war games, which 
which is they equipped the whole military school with uh, a gun from a team, either a blue team or a red team, and uh, they are filled with paintball bullets, uh, and the idea is to collect the flag and if you are shot, you are out. Um, as they're all prepping to get things started, Chucky sneaks into the armory and switches all the red guns, uh, paintball bullets, with live ammo, which, oh, that's not good. Um, all this to this movie, um, Andy has made friends with a nerdy kid who also doesn't quite fit. Um, and then Chucky uh, is discovered by the barber of the military camp and decides, uh, you know what, he's going to cut the doll's hair. He's got a thing for cutting hair. <laughs> um, Chucky kills this barber, but not before the nerdy kid catches what happened and he freaks out. He doesn't tell anyone. Uh, he's been bullied so much, it's like giving him a shell shock in a way and he's completely freaking out. Um, Chucky then decides to hatch a plan where he is going to kidnap Andy's new girlfriend at the military camp and use her as bait to make Andy take the kid to him, uh, which Andy doesn't want to do but he does anyway uh, and they do this during the war games. Uh, Chucky then tricks the red and blue team into coming face to face with each other and knowing that Red Team now has live rounds. Uh, both teams get there thinking that there's a trap set by the other team and the Red Team begin to uh, get ready to fire and Chucky throws a live grenade and the nerd kid uh, doing the one thing he, he doesn't quite know what he's doing but he decides no and he jumps on top of this grenade and unfortunately the nerd kid dies uh, but this sets off the two teams to start firing each other. Um, and the red team fire at the uh, blue team, hitting their commander, which is the, the guy that's been bullying uh, Andy this whole time. Uh, and everyone, after uh, there's a few shots fired, but only this one kid is hit. And they're like, oh my god, live ammo! Everyone's all freaking out. Um, but Chucky uses this as a way to get hold of the kid and force the kid to run off with him so they can go and collect the kid's soul. Andy, being the heroic character of this film, along with his girlfriend, uh, decide they're going to chase after and they chase him to the local fun fair. Um, where they um, hide in a ghost train, and in the ghost train, uh, Chucky thinks that he is safe to uh, play hide the soul with the kid. Uh, but before he can do any of this, he is uh, hit by a scythe in the. Uh, by, by a. Grim Reaper type thing, which somehow the scythe is sharp enough to cut his flesh. Okay, we'll roll with it, because maybe safety checks aren't great in the 90s. I can't really remember him getting hurt by anything like that, but okay. Um, and he slowly gets broken down into pieces. Uh, he hides in a really high up stack of fake skulls, thinking this is high enough. Uh, but Andy has got a gun, he shoots Chucky um, in the arm. Chucky loses an arm again. It seems to be a common thing that happens to Chucky. Uh, shoots him in the leg and then Chucky falls into a fan that is blowing fake fire about, uh, chopping Chucky into pieces. Uh, it's a lot quicker than the first two with uh, Chucky's death. Uh, he and he deals with him quite quickly, maybe because the first two times have taken him forever to deal with Chucky. Uh, but he does, he succeeds. The kid uh, lives, Andy lives, and his girlfriend is living, everyone's living happily ever after. And as far as we're concerned, Chucky's chopped into pieces, no one's gonna find his remains, uh, the good guy dolls aren't gonna rebuild the, fa uh, the factory with his body pop with any parts of his body anymore, like he did in the first and the second, or no, the second and the third one. So we've won, it's the end. There's no ominous, maybe Chucky's still alive thing. It is over. And there's a good reason for that. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the review element of this video. Alright, so in the review element of this, I'm going to talk about how I feel about this, uh, cool things I noticed, and then we'll talk about any little extras in the last bit before we say goodbye to this video. Alright then, so what did I think of this one? Um, personally, I felt this one was, I don't know, a little bit rushed in a way. Uh, the first two kind of really give you time to uh, get to know uh, the main characters. The first one definitely you get to know Andy and his mum, uh, and then the second one you get to know uh, Andy's new situation. Um, 
One thing they continue is uh, Andy's kind of uh, PTSD of uh, Chucky trying to kill him and take his soul. Uh, whenever he sees a good guy doll, even if it's on a TV screen or the actual good guy doll Chucky, they didn't know Chucky at the time, he kind of did, uh, thought he might have been, he was right, um, he freaks out. Um, but apart from that, they don't give you a lot of time to kind of get to know Andy. Um, you could watch this as a standalone, but as the movie gets on, you're like, oh, well, there's history here, you kind of need to know. And um, they kind of expect you to have watched the first two, which makes sense, it's called Child Play 3. So I guess that if you're going to jump into a third one and be confused, it's kind of your own fault in a way. Movies these days do like, tend to, if you're going to jump halfway through, they give you enough of the backstory to go, oh, okay, I can kind of get what's going on here. And you've got to understand the, the law that um, Chucky is into voodoo and that's how he is possessing the body of uh, the good guy doll. That he tried twice with Andy and that he has to rush to do it before he becomes human. So I think we do stay in this film near the end. But yeah, it's, it's all very rushed. Uh, Chucky is like a ninja in this one, more than he is in the other ones. Like one minute he'll be in a case in Andy's room. Uh, and he looks like he's about to sneak out to kill Andy and then the next minute and he'll go to the case and put some clothes in and Chucky's gone swiping a knife off the table and it's like wait, the table's here, the case is here and he's kind of facing away from the case but at the same time at the case how does Chucky go from there, around and hide from the bed alright then, it's like a superpower Chucky has gained where he's like super ninja now more than ninja than he has been in the two films. Um, but my overall opinion is I think it's a bit of a quick plot and it kind of goes from A to B to C to D really quickly. Um, you really have to know what's going on really to, to keep up with it. Uh, which as I say, it's the third in the, in the saga so it kind of makes sense. Um, but you can kind of see the tonal shift. Uh, the first two Chucky films have a very um, scary sort of where is Chucky, he could be anywhere, he could kill you at any moment kind of thing. Uh, whereas the third one, kind of the direction that the rest of the side goes as well, is it's more like who will Chucky kill next? Less of a is Chucky right behind Andy and he's going to get Andy's soul? And more of a ooh, who, which way is Andy, Chucky going to kill someone next? Is it going to be going to push him in the garbage truck? Is he going to choke them with a uh, yo-yo? He's going to beat them over the head with uh, a pole or a gold club. Um, he's going to shoot them, he's going to blow them up. How's he going to do it? Uh, which is, as I say, the way the direction the series goes in from uh, this point onwards. And it is probably why the series itself, because of the tonal shift, it stopped being a Charles Play film. Um, if you watch all the Charles Play, you know that it goes Charles Play 1, 2, 3, and then after the third one, it becomes Chucky movies. It's no longer about the good guy doll and Ch and uh, Andy and trying to collect his soul. It's more about Chucky wants to kill. Chucky understands that he is now stuck in this form and he's going to kill. Uh, there's still the whole well, he wants to get into his body kind of thing, um, but it's much more about he he's Chucky the psycho killer and he's going to be killing people in awesome ways this way and that way and all sorts. Uh, so yeah, it's it's different. It stops being scary and becomes more of a comedy horror esque thing, which I enjoy to a degree, so I'm still going to enjoy the rest of the series. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm going to go on to the third segment, which uh, was kind of like it's kind of like an Easter egg kind of thing. It's the only thing I've really noticed about, um, about this film. Uh, I would talk about uh, the rules in the second one, and there's not, no new rules except that if you're an adult in this world, uh, you are stupid unless Chucky has attacked you and you are then automatically on Andy's team. If you are on Andy's team, then you have, the super, you have the ability to see that Chucky is going to hurt you and you know that Chucky is a problem. But if you're not on Andy's team, you're not going to know and you're probably going to die. Uh, so that's kind of the, the rule that I, I missed from the second one. That, yeah, it's a rule of this universe. But I want to talk about an Easter egg, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't know who would notice this kind of thing. But at the beginning, when Chucky is killing the businessman, uh, you see that uh, there's a bunch of toys. And I don't know how deliberate this is, but there is um, a helicopter with helicopter blades, 
there is an uh, army guy uh, crawling across the floor with a gun, um, and there's a car. And it almost feels like that this is almost telling you the plot of the film. Uh, so the car runs into a guy's face, which could symbolise the cart from the ghost train, which almost uh, takes out Andy at one point in the film. There's the army guy crawling, with the gun goes, do, 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 which is the army guys that have no war games. And the helicopter blades uh, could symbolise the uh, blades of the ch or Chucky at the end. That's kind of a thing I noticed. Um, I don't know if that was too deliberate, that's kind of the feel I got from that. The fact that all the toys you could only match up with the part of the ending of the film. Uh, I don't know, it could be deliberate, it could be just me playing the straws, but I thought that was a cool little thing that was in it. Anyway, guys, I hope you have enjoyed my Charles Play Review 3. Uh, I am enjoying this series very much. Uh, I was trying to get um, this to a video out last week, but didn't quite have time. Uh, so I'm going to have to race out three this week, and then I will get um, Bride Seed uh, as well this week, and then I'll get Cult and Curse done the final week of Halloween, and then I'll top this all off with my uh, comparison of the original Charles Play, the 2019 Charles Play movie. I uh, hope you enjoyed the series so far. If you have, please hit that like button, guys. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me which in the saga is your favourite, guys. And if you haven't already, guys, please subscribe to this channel. It helps us so much. Subs are growing every day. Until next video, guys, I will catch you later. Bye!